Raven on a jet plane. <laughs> I knew there'd be a song somewhere in here. <laughs> Welcome to this week's edition to the Weekly Travel Alert. I'm Steve Glenn. I'm Paul Glenn. And we're going to have a lot of fun today. We just got back from where, Paul? From Well, I got back from Istanbul. Where are you getting back from? Uh, I actually am flying back from Istanbul, too, but I had to go to Athens and Rome and then back to Istanbul, so... Um, the whirlwind. The whirlwind. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, we're having fun on the Weekly Traveler. Alert. Every week we send this uh, email out to 100,000 people that want to get our Weekly Travel Alert from Executive Travel. Paul's the CEO there. I'm the chairman. We have with us today Ryan Swihart. Ryan's our trustworthy uh, hashtag nerd lead keyboard all the he makes us look good yeah, he tries yeah, i mean there's yeah. only so much you can do but he gives his best i can tell you that all right so we're gonna have fun <laughs> you know what i thought about paul traveling all that international stuff you and i do that almost every month but uh all the things that people need to do i put together a list of 18 things that people need to do before they get on a plane and go internationally mm -hmm. and these will safeguard you from finding problems when you're on that trip to Italy, wherever you're Athens, going, yes, or, your, your or, whirlwind. When you get your whirlwind, <laughs> these things will save you some hassle. So we're gonna have fun today. We're gonna go through them one, two, three. Here we go. Here's the list of 18 things you need to make sure you do before traveling internationally. Number one. Check your passport to make sure it does not expire within six months of the date of your return. Most people don't know that. No, and that's one of those that I, I ran into somebody just yesterday that, uh, you know, that was their uh, worry. Was they, I think they're actually going to be tra traveling with you sometime, and they had mentioned that uh, they didn't, didn't realize that they had to have their passport with more than six months from the date of the return. Return So date. I think that's the other key to that is, um, yeah, it's got to be have at least six months worth of validation from the date of the return that you'll be returned into the States. And it's not the U.S. that worries about it. It's the country you're going to. And they'll say, hey, I'm sorry you can't come in because they want to make sure you leave the country. And uh, they, they do that with that six month. I just had a, a, a friend that... Uh, He's going to head to Europe, and he looked on. He says, my passport expires in July. Will that work? I go, no. No, yeah. And so he took his car to Minneapolis, took his passport into the passport place, and he, he's getting Expedited it done it. in okay. one day. Okay, well, so, well that's commitment. That, I guess well, when you got to go, you got to go. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Number two on this week's edition of the Weekly Traveler, of all the things you need to do when you're traveling internationally, you take care of these before you get on the plane. Check to see if a visa is required. And Paul, you, the U.S. Embassy has a, a, a list that you can click on there and say, I'm going to Italy. And then, do you need a visa if you're a U.S. citizen, yes or no? And I think the key is, is what your citizenship is. Yes. So, because I think that's where, you know, in the, in the U.S., we've got many people with different citizenships. So it comes down to not, you know, where, where do you live, but what's your citizenship? Right. Yeah, because you could be... You could live in the United States, but you have a citizenship in Great Britain, and that Great Britain is what different requirements, different yep. requires different for the requirements. visa. So th number one was the passport. Number two is the visa. Number three in this week's list of things you better do before you travel internationally, enroll in the Smart Traveler program. The State Department has that where you can put your trip in there so they know you're in, uh, for example, if you went to Brazil. Wherever you're at. They yeah. would know where you're at. You put, a, hey, I'm staying at this hotel. So if something happens, they can notify yep. you and yep. try to get you information to get out of there. Yep, yep. So that's very important. But and that's I, one that a lot of I people gotta don't print think my, about. I got to admit something. You I'm a sinner. Yeah, I yeah. don't do it. That's one of those, especially when you're going to someplace like Italy. You know, sure. you don't think you don't think that anything's going to come up that's going to. Yeah. But when you look at what's going on in the world today, you never you can be anywhere. And well, with your happen. trip to Istanbul, you probably should have uh, registered for this. Yeah, you know, Istanbul's no, probably a little bit viewed as a little, little bit edgy, a little bit edgier. Okay. Than, yep. Number four on this week's edition of the Weekly Traveler. You know, Executive Travel sponsor these. How many years have we been in business now? Oh, oh going on 38 here. 38, yeah, about at the end of this year. So we're enjoying doing the business of travel. It reads, check for vaccination requirements. We never thought about this much, except when you go into China or mm -hmm. India, 
And you gotta, you literally gotta get a hepatitis uh, B or C or D or E F G. You go, and, yeah, you you go to the medical a, center and yeah. they pull up a list of fifty different things that you need to be aware of before yeah. you go in there. You know, and you get a uh, flu shot mm -hmm. sometimes. And I went in once and got four shots in on my shot. on my yep. way to India. Yep. And so and pills and, pill. and malaria I mean, pills. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You've got other things besides vaccinations that are so you make sure you check that out. You can find that uh, actually. There's uh, the University of Nebraska, which we go to yep. over here, has a doctor that specializes in immunizations for international travel. So that's a really good asset, and she's really friendly and helps mm -hmm. out too. So number five. Check in with the airlines 24 hours prior to travel to confirm your flight and get seat assignments. So, Paul, why would you do that? Well, for me, I'm getting those seat assignments at the time of booking. Right. So, I mean, I think that's a key, is, especially if you use a travel management company. You should be able to get those, assuming you're on a standard carrier at the time of booking, unless you're on a carrier like a Southwest, but you're not going to be using them for international unless you're doing Mexico and things. But, yeah, getting those seats, double-checking. You know, I've seen more often in the last month or so, they're changing equipment which means then they are the, so automatically the changing the their seats. the airplane, yes. right? right? And so that when they do that, then they are moving people's seats. So you want to double check to make sure if you want that aisle seat, that if they changed your equipment, you still have that aisle seat. Didn't you, ben or Becky, benefit from that on a trip to Rome We recently? did, yeah. Um, yeah, it was one of those, I, I thank God, that, uh, that they changed equipment because they went from having 28 business class seats to 48 business class seats. So they seats. doubled. So they more than almost doubled the business class seats was then put her into because she to was on a upgrade. wait list. She was on a wait list, yeah. and so when they went from twenty four to forty eight, boom, she cleared, yep. and and uh, I bet she smiled she, all she the way there. She was a happy there. camper, and, and Faith was a happy too, camper. Right? She got it both directions. They yeah. did the same thing both directions. Yeah. Yep. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, check in with the airport and, and check online with them also to see if the, there's been a schedule change or. A, flight delay or anything like that. Number six on this week's edition of the Weekly Travel Alert reads, confirm your hotels, rental cars, etc., with your travel advisor and also secure the 24-hour emergency phone number. So like our company has a 24-hour emergency number. If you're in Algeria, uh, you can call that number and, and a professional agent will answer and help you out with that. So if you work with a travel a advisor, a travel agency, or what we call a travel management company, then you can access that 24-hour support, and that's very helpful. And I think another thing, and I don't know if we have it on here, but to that, if you work with a travel advisor, I would suggest that you let them have a copy of your passport. Absolutely. So should anything come up, your passport gets misplaced or stolen, you've got somebody that's got that copy that they can help you then since you've got something to go present to the embassy and, and get a replacement. Yeah, we do that in all of our groups. I know mm -hmm. our women of the Midwest, which we have a lot of groups that go, they keep a copy of their passport. So mm -hmm. if there's any problem, we can help you get out of that jam. Number seven in this week's Weekly Traveler, we've got a list of 18 things you better do before you go on that international flight. Purchase travel insurance. Your health insurance will not cover you abroad. Think about it, Paul. Let's Say you spend five thousand dollars on it per person on a trip to you know to Europe, mm -hmm. okay? And we just had this happen three days before the trip. Your wife's father passes away, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you're gonna stay home, yeah, yeah. And if you don't have insurance, you could be out everything. You could I mean, be out any, now, any time after that final payment is done then there are going to be penalties. And actually, from the time there's a deposit, there's likely to be penalties. And so, you know, a key to not just having the insurance also comes to when you purchase the insurance. Right. Because, you know, if you have any pre-existing conditions, much of the time, if you purchase that insurance within two weeks of when you put down that initial deposit, then your pre-existing conditions will also be covered. Where if you wait till after that two weeks, then purchase the insurance, they're not going to cover those. So if you've had prior heart issues or anything like that, and then something comes up, that's not going to be covered. You know, our phone number here at Executive Travels, 402-435-8888. You can also find us at executivetravel.com. We have a Cracker Jack agent named Beth who knows everything about international travel insurance, and she can give you the skinny on it. So if you're thinking about getting travel insurance for your international, I know for me the health 
part of it is very important because my health insurance doesn't cover me internationally. Well, and if something goes awry while you're traveling, it the health insurance or the insurance then gets it so that you're going to get uh, medical coverage that would be at the level that we're used to here in the States. You bet. Because in a lot of countries, that medical uh, experience may not be at the standards we're used to. We're almost halfway through our list of 18 things you need to make sure you do before traveling internationally. Number eight reads, call your bank and tell them, literally, you're traveling internationally and uh, so your credit, your card, credit card can be used. Yep. Many banks have fraud on fraud protection on your credit card. So if they see a charge from from Spain and they don't know you're in Spain, guess what? They're going to think somebody's using your card and they'll block that charge. Yep. So if you call them and say, hey, I'm uh, Steve Glenn. I'm going to Spain. I'll be here from here to there. And they'll say, well, we'll unlock it. What dates are you going to be there? Yeah. All those things. And, and what areas are you going to be in? And then that way they'll know that uh, these are going to be valid charges for you. Also, you want to you want to test out your PIN. If you don't use your PIN to get cash out regularly, uh, that's probably how you'll get your cash. You'll get your euros out of an ATM in Europe. And so you'll want to be able to test your card here in the States, make sure you know or remember your PIN or change your PIN, and then go internationally. Uh, I've heard of people even getting a separate credit card just to travel internationally. That's probably a wise idea. Yeah. At this point in the world, yeah. I mean, just get something that's got a, a small limit on it yeah. just, just for that, just yeah. in case it does get compromised. 500 a day or something. Yep. Yeah, man. Okay, number nine, call your cell phone provider and enable their international calling plan. It costs about 10 bucks a day don't rely on Wi-Fi now you don't have to use your calling plan and you won't be billed that ten dollars a day if you don't use you don't your use data yeah. okay but if you call use your phone or use your data they'll charge you that ten dollars a day and I'm a big security guy yeah. so my thing is is I actually then will use my laptop and utilize my cell phone hotspot even when I'm traveling internationally just so that I know any data that I've got isn't going to be compromised because nobody else will be on my network we're ready to rumble with number 10 thanks for joining us today on the executive travel weekly travel alert that sponsored by executive travel got Paul Glenn with me and Steve Glenn here and of course Ryan Swihart's looking down and looking so serious behind that camera and uh, he's thinking about golf today. Yeah, he said it's the weather's too good today for him. <laughs> so anyway, we're on number 10. Purchase an electric converter adapter so you can charge your phone and also purchase a battery charger. You know, those those battery chargers that you can throw in your keep your phone going, keep your phone going if you can't find a, a charger. Now, it's important that you find a, a converter that converts 220 down to 110 and also an adapter which is the plug the mm -hmm. type of plug they fit together and then you don't have to worry about frying any of your electronics yeah i got one actually jennifer our, our president uh, turned me on to one last time when we were in italy and it's got multiple standard u.s plugins but it's also got three usb plugins so okay. you can actually have six devices plugged in at one time and it's a converter for all so it works wonderful well that's i need one of those and my birthday's coming up Paul. is it all yeah. right oh, well, what do you think makes it easy for me <laughs> tell me what you want <laughs> <laughs> all right the number uh, 11 on this week's list of the Weekly Traveler reads, uh, double check your medications to make sure you have enough for the duration of your trip. Don't pack them in their checked luggage, only in your carry-on, and make copies of your prescriptions on your cell phone. Mm -hmm. So you, if you lose them, you could go into a pharmacy, perhaps contact the doctor. And uh, it's amazing though, in Europe you can get a lot of a prescription medication, medication you can't get over you can't here, get over here yeah. and you don't even need a prescription yeah. uh, so especially with uh, things for colds and stuff like that and i know there are certain medications where they will limit how much you can take so if you have a, a longer trip you might actually need your doctor to issue you another prescription that you could go have filled while you're on your trip so all things to consider you bet number 12 on this week's list of 18 things you better do before you go on that international trip reads enroll in the global entry program and the tsa pre-check program for expedited security clearance I'll, i can't tell you how many hours upon hours this has saved me. oh yeah and the uh, you know coming back from europe here a couple weeks back i had always thought that if you were 
had a child traveling with their parents that they would be able to go through global entry. No. I learned that the hard way. Uh-huh. So it doesn't matter how you old your you are. child behind. Well, my, my no, darling, I decided my darling. I decided I didn't want to get divorced. So <laughs> we uh, we luckily we had a, an agent that helped us get into the fast line on the other side. But no, I uh, since then I was we got to Chicago, got in the airport, we got her signed up for global entry. She'll be doing her interview before we go back to Europe. You know, two times a year we usually have the TSA agents come to Executive Travel at our office at 1212 O Street, and they actually do all the interviews here for three days from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. They're coming in May. Sometime in May. I think May 14th, 15th, 16th. So. If you are looking for that, go online, and a lot of times they'll get a, you'll get approved for your general uh, global entry within a couple days. And then once you get that approval, you go back into their site, and you can actually scroll down to Nebraska. Executive Travel will show up there. You can click on there and see if there are times left. But I think they are going to come one more time potentially this summer. So if you can't get it by the time there's still space in May, then still go ahead and, and get registered and get that approval. And then as soon as we get the dates for, I think, in June or July, We'll let you know, and you can come in and do your interviews here. I can't tell you how important it is to get a global entry. Some of the lines coming in are two hours long if you don't have it. I can get through in about 10 seconds. I was going to say, it's less than 30 seconds. Yeah, so that's very, very important. Underline that today. Number 13 says, take $500 in cash in the currency of the country you are visiting to pay for incidentals. Now, I used to always say to people, don't worry about it. Take your credit card, get to the ATM when you arrive and get your cash. But sometimes things just don't work out right. And I want to have people have security of some of the, if you're going to Italy, you want euros. If you're going to to Great Britain, you know, you're going to have pounds. But get that beforehand, have it in your wallet, and just have confidence not worrying about does that atm work well and usually if you've got your your local bank they can tend to get it in within a week so if you know where you're going work with your local bank and they should be able to help you out with that number 14 reads download the airline app you are flying on also other apps like google translate google maps other things but if you plug your your record locator into the airline app your flight will come up they'll notify you of changes so make sure if you're flying on united download united you can watch movies on it if you're flying on delta download the delta app on your your phone all those things and and if you're traveling internationally especially if you're doing it more than once in your lifetime you should probably get a frequent flyer number with, with that carrier which then everything will automatically be on that app and then you go in and you know i'll go in and and put uh, to send me notifications and so it's all very quick and easy and that's always the days I'm taking off especially when I'm taking off from Lincoln first thing I do is look and say is the flight leaving Lincoln on time or can I go back to bed for another hour <laughs> hey number 15 on this list of 18 things you better do before you go internationally reads purchase an international driving permit if you are renting a car in Europe especially now here's the funny thing you don't need that driving permit, international driving, to rent a car. But if you get pulled over for a traffic violation or um, any like a toll or anything like that, you're in an accident, or you're in an yeah. accident, they're going to ticket you for not having it. So it's kind of a one of those things that kind of doesn't make sense. And, necessary evil. And there's a lot of fraud on that on the internet too. There's a jillion people that want to sell you a piece of paper for 10 or 20 bucks, but it's not worth anything. Well, and I don't know. I mean, I know locally, all you have to do is go to the, the AAA and it, I think they charge $29 or something like that. So it's not outrageous and it lasts for a year. So pretty quick and painless and it'll save you a lot of hassle if something does go awry. The number 16 of my list of 18 reads, Check the 10-day weather forecast for your destination you're traveling to to pack accordingly. I don't go to Italy a lot. Sometimes I don't need to take a heavy coat. No. Why pack it? Yeah. You know, because I'm going to just go with carry-on. I'm not going to do all this other stuff. So you can kind of look, hey, is it going to be hot? Is it going to be moderate? Is it going to rain? I always recommend you have some kind of light rain jacket. Or an umbrella. Or an umbrella. If you're you're actually checking a bag, an umbrella is very easy to take along. So 
You bet. Number 17 hits right at the heart. I'm going to hit this hard. Do not check on luggage, okay? Pack only carry-on luggage so you don't waste time waiting for your luggage at the airport carousel. It gives you freedom. If your flight gets canceled, you need to get another flight. You just take your luggage with you. They'll always ask you, did you check a bag? And if you say yes, they're going to keep you on that flight. Yep, yep. You know, so... And also, if you buy the cheapest airfare, that economy, what do they call that? Economy plus. Well, basic, that, economy. basic economy. Basic economy. Okay, so if you buy that basic economy, the cheapest flight to Europe, let's say it's 1000 bucks. What you'll find is that doesn't include any checked luggage. 150 bucks there, 150 bucks back, you'll pay $300 to check that bag. Actually, where, it may make it so that you can't even use the overheads. Right. Like what you what they do allow is only what will fit in the uh, below the seat in front of you. I just checked today on United Airlines the difference between basic economy where you have to pay for a bag and regular economy is $200. Okay. So basically, they're factoring in it's cheaper That's to buy. round trip? Round trip. Okay, yeah, you're yeah. better off. You're better off yeah. buying a $200 more expensive ticket, you get some extra bennies with that. So please, come on, just do carry-on luggage. And they have laundry mats. They have, you can get things laundered over in Europe and China and India. They all have to they get wash clean clothes. clothes everywhere in the world? Yeah, they do. They do? Okay. They do. Okay. <laughs> Number 18. We finally get to well, the end. Slowly Number but 18. surely. Here we go. If your trip is longer than seven days, take an Uber to the airport. The other day, I went with friends on a long 10-day trip, okay. came out of the parking garage. The cost to park my car was over $220. Yeah. I know. $220. No, Omaha, I think, is up to $23 a day to park in the garage, which, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that adds up real quick. Yeah, I mean, I could park at a friend's house in West Omaha Uber. and Uber for $20. Yeah. Or, or, or work with your advisor or local hotels. A lot of hotels that are near the airports will have a park and stay program so if you go in the night before your flight they'll let you leave your vehicle there while you're gone and then use their shuttle to get to the airport and they'll pick you up when you get back so lots of alternative options well and you travel a lot from the lincoln airport and i think the the parking there is a lot cheaper isn't it yeah i think the garage in lincoln's 950 a day so wow. yeah, you can can get it uh, three days for the price of one you bet so those are the 18 things we ask you to consider before you get on that jet plane leaving on a jet plane <laughs> i knew there'd be a song somewhere in here <laughs> was that peter paul and mary i'll have to look that one up but that was definitely the 60s i think if not the 50s we're glad you joined us this week on the weekly traveler we had a lot of fun sharing these ideas with you and we're going to be using this video to send out to many of our travelers that travel Before internationally in 2024, just to give them a little heads up so their trip goes easy. I'm Steve Glenn. I'm Paul Glenn. Please like, subscribe, share, and add any comments below so we can make sure we're hitting on topics that are of interest or important to you in a future episode. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week.